And we really need to understand when we facilitate new collective intelligences, for example, and this is everything, internet of things, financial structures, social structures, swarm robotics, we, like, we make these things all the time. We're really not very good at understanding what level of intelligence we're creating because, because everything is deceptive, right? Even, even bubble sort does things no, no one saw coming for, for, for decades. So, yeah. so all of these things, right? Not to mention AI and all that stuff. So, so, so there are some, uh, some, some things that we can't foresee. And, and then the next question is, what are the goals they're going to have? Are they and and how and and how you know how how do we feel about those those goals? Just as a simple example, the first thing we saw the anthrobots doing is repairing damage to other cells, right? They repair neural neural wounds. So, um, you know, one thing you might ask is the intrinsic motivation. Like we know what the we 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 found some of the intrinsic motivation of these sorting algorithms, which is all the stuff they do when the when the requirement to sort numbers is loosened up a little bit, right? That's one thing we did in that paper is we 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 found a way to loosen the requirement to actually sort without changing the algorithm, we found a way to do that. And we saw that, yeah, then they do more of what they really want to do, right? When you, when you loosen up the, you know, I always think of, I always think of like, you know, kids in math, like you, you can, you can force a kid to sit in math class and do math, but what he might want to be doing is outside, you know, playing baseball or whatever. And to whatever extent you can loosen up that first restriction, you'll see more of what the intrinsic motivation is, right? Yeah. Yeah. For, for better or for worse, you, worse, you'll find out what it is. And so, and so, you know, so, so some of them may have all kinds of beneficial things. Mm. Also, also, we might be at some point fishing in the pool of minds that has never been embodied before. And some of those may or may not be beneficial to us, but we're, mm. we're never going to know unless we get a better, a better science of it. Um, cancer, you know, cancer is somewhat related to that. What we've found is that uh, ca cancer can be, can be uh, seen as a kind of dissociative identity disorder. Not of, the, not of the main cognitive, uh, human cognitive intelligence, of the somatic intelligence. So what, what I mean by that is groups of cells, su sufficiently large and complex groups of cells, can maintain very grandiose goals, keeping organ, you know, making and keeping up organs. You know, that's a very, no, no individual cell knows what an, mm -hmm. what an organ is, but, but the collective certainly does. And, um, and, and so groups of cells can do that. When you disconnect a cell from that collective, it can no longer, it no longer has access to that giant memory. It has access to a tiny cognitive light cone, which is what amoebas have. So, so then they do what amoebas do in the outside environment. In fact, cancer cells treat the rest of the body as just external environment. They do niche construction. And so they modify the, the, the they modify the environment. They try to um, hack other cells into joining them. They go where life is good. They eat whatever they want. They dump entropy back into the world. Uh, this is metastasis basically. And so, so we've shown that that can happen uh, due to electrical dissociations between cells and that we can actually uh, normalize and reverse uh, the cancer phenotype by reconnecting cells to their neighbors, not killing them with chemotherapy, not fixing the oncogene, but, but uh, physically reconnecting them to their neighbors. That's 